It's probably a little scary that you're approaching your 40s or you're already in your 40s and you have little to nothing saved up for retirement. However, there's good news because with the amount of time that you have left until retirement and by using the steps in this video, we'll be able to get you on track to building a sizable retirement account. And so don't lose hope. We're going to walk through this step by step. You actually have a lot more options than you think. The first step of this process though, and arguably the most important step is going to be giving yourself some perspective. You might be beating yourself up for not thinking about investing and retirement a little bit sooner, but the truth is you actually still have a lot of time left to save and invest. As you'll see in a little bit, you can start investing and saving for retirement now and still build up a sizable account, potentially even seven figures if you play your cards right. And in a little bit, I'll show you exactly how to play your cards. Now, after you've adjusted your perspective, the next thing you'll wanna do is immediately open up a retirement account. And the reason you wanna open up a retirement account instead of just a standard brokerage account is because most retirement accounts have tax advantages that can save you tens, potentially even hundreds of thousands of dollars of money that would otherwise go to Uncle Sam and his good friends at the IRS. Now, I'd recommend that you open up a Roth IRA. And if your employer offers a 401k with 401k matching, then you should definitely take advantage of that as well. 401k matching is when your employer matches your contributions or the amount of money that you're putting into the 401k up to a certain percentage. It's literally free money. However, even if you have a 401k, I still recommend that you open up a Roth IRA because in my opinion, the tax advantages of the Roth IRA far outweigh the tax advantages of a 401k. Let's say, for example, Example that for the next 25 years from 40 to 65 that you start investing into your Roth IRA consistently and your account grows to $500,000. Well, the moment you start taking money out of your Roth IRA to live off of during retirement, none of that money is going to be taxed by the IRS. And just to kind of give you some perspective, if you were to instead invest that same money into a 401k or just a standard brokerage account and your account grew to $500,000 in one of those accounts, the moment you start taking money out of those accounts, the IRS is going to tax that money as ordinary income. And so with the Roth IRA, you get to keep 100% of the money that you withdraw. Whereas with other accounts, the IRS has taken a large chunk of the money because, well, taxes. Also, just know that a Roth IRA can be opened up completely free at basically any broker. But my top recommendations are Fidelity, Vanguard, M1 Finance, and Webull. And I've got links to all of those down in the description below. Anyways, once you've opened up your retirement account, it's now time to actually decide what you're going to be investing in and how much you'll be investing. Now, what I don't want you doing is going out there and trying to pick individual stocks to invest in because in my opinion it's way too time consuming and there are far better investment options available that can actually give you better returns one option is to invest in some type of broad market etf something that's going to give you exposure to the entire stock market an example of this would be vti which is the ticker symbol for the vanguard total stock market etf this etf invests in over 4,000 plus stocks including top companies like apple microsoft amazon and google and so when you invest into this etf it's basically like you're investing in to the entire stock market. Another option would be to invest in a target date fund. So a target date fund is a type of investment that's asset allocation automatically adjusts to be more conservative the closer you get to retirement. The fund will automatically reallocate your portfolio to hold less stocks and more bonds. And so for example, let's say that you're currently 40 and you plan on retiring at 65, which is 25 years from now. You would invest into something like the Fidelity Freedom 2045 fund. And as you probably have guessed, the 2045 in the name of the fund is the year or close to the year that you plan on retiring. Now, for some people, and I would count myself as part of this group, but for some people, they would prefer to remain as aggressive as possible with their investing all the way up until retirement. And so this means that instead of you investing in a target date fund, which would automatically reallocate your portfolio to be more conservative as you got closer to retirement, you would just continue to aggressively invest into the stock market using an ETF like VTI, as well as investing in other high performing assets outside of the stock market to try and maximize your returns as much as possible. Because the truth is 25 years is still a long time left to invest and build wealth for retirement. And 25 years gives you plenty of time to hold through any market downturns, which are inevitable. And so I guess what I'm trying to say is that you should still be as aggressive as possible even right now, because you still have 25 years left to invest and build wealth. However, at the same time, you still want to make sure that you're as diversified as possible with your investments. What's been happening in the markets this year is a perfect example of why diversification with your investments is so important. Since the beginning of the year, stocks and crypto have been dropping like weights in the water. But other assets like real estate and contemporary art have been doing great. And the nice thing about contemporary art is because you have a long-term outlook for retirement, you can hold it for longer so it appreciates even more. It's like the illiquidity premium theory, and we can see it if we look at this data. In fact, did you know that contemporary art prices outperform the S&P 500's total 
return by 164% over the past 26 years. And with a new emerging platform called Masterworks, you can invest in fractional shares in high value works of art, including Picasso, Banksy, and Warhol. Billionaires have been quietly diversifying their portfolios with art for years. But now, all of us have access to invest in what JP Morgan has called a relatively stable asset due to its illiquid nature, as I was just saying. And although past performance is no indication of future results, Masterworks has become one of the largest buyers in the art market today, and since 2019 has sold five paintings for an average net return of 26.8%. Over 500,000 people have already signed up to date to invest in an asset that outperforms both the S&P 500 and other asset classes during periods of inflation. Now, there is currently a wait list to sign up, but if you go to masterworks.art slash Joshua Mayo, you can instantly start diversifying your portfolio today. Okay, so we've established that if you want to try and maximize your returns before retirement, that you should invest in the stock market using an ETF like VTI for as long as possible. However, some of you may be more risk adverse, meaning that you actually prefer to take on less risk, even if it means that you're going to get a smaller return on your investment. And so what I'd like to do now is demonstrate to you how much your investment would grow over a 25 year period if you invested aggressively into an ETF like VTI for the next 25 years versus investing in a target date fund, which is going to be a lot more conservative and have smaller returns. And so after 25 years of investing, how will your savings look with these two investments? Well, if we put these two investments side by side, VTI, which is the more aggressive ETF investing 100% into the stock market, and this Vanguard target date fund with a retirement of 2022, you'll see the obvious performance differences between the two. VTI, since it's investing 100% into the stock market, has far more impressive returns year after year. And while the target date fund is certainly not doing bad, when compared side by side with VTI, it's evident who the clear winner is in terms of historical performance. But performance aside, let's actually see how much money you would have between these two investments after 25 years of investing. And we'll start with the more conservative approach of using a target date fund to invest for retirement. And for the target date fund, the average annual return over the past 10 years is a 6.86%. But we're going to adjust for the average rate of inflation, which is about 3% per year. And this brings your investment return down to a 3.86%. Let's head over to the calculator now and actually see how much your investment would grow if you were to invest $500 per month over a 25 year period with an average annual return of 3.86%. As you can see, assuming that you have 25 years left to invest, your investment would grow to a little bit over $250,000. However, let's take a look at the more aggressive investment now. Over the past 10 years, VTI has given an average annual return of about 13.42%. And if we adjust that for inflation, we've got 10.42%. And so the same rules apply for this, $500 per month being invested over a 25 year period with a 10.42% average annual return means that you would retire with nearly $700,000. You can see that obviously VTI is the more aggressive and risky investment, but because of that, the return potential is a lot higher compared to the more conservative target date fund, which is less risky, but will also have a much smaller return. Now, some of you may be thinking that's great and all, but Joshua, I don't have $500 per month to invest. Well, this actually brings me to the next part of the video, and that's how much should you invest? Ideally, and this is likely very obvious, but you want to be investing as much as you can. My recommendation is at a minimum, you should be maxing out your Roth IRA every year. And so if you're under the age of 50, then your max contribution limit is $6,000, which comes out to $500 per month. And as you just saw being illustrated, investing $500 per month into an ETF like VTI over a 25 year period will have your investments growing close to $1 million by the time you retire. Now, I get it. You may not have $500 per month that you can invest, which actually brings me to the next part of the video, which is if you don't have a large salary, trying to find ways to increase your income and make more money. About roughly four to five years ago, I was working a job that paid me $15 per hour or about $31,000 per year, not even including taxes. After taxes, it was probably closer to like $27,000 per year. I knew that I had to either start something for myself or find a new job if I ever wanted to make more money. And so one night I sat down on my computer and I did some research and I found a website called called Upwork that would allow me to make money online freelancing. And so I did some more research on Upwork and I found out that web development was one of the highest paying categories on Upwork. Now, keep in mind, I didn't have any previous experience building professional websites or anything like that, but I knew that if I just took the time that I could eventually learn how to do it. Fast forward about a year later after discovering Upwork, I had already quit my low paying job. And as my first year as an amateur web developer, I ended up making close to $80,000. This increased income not only allowed me to buy my first home, which will eventually become a rental property, but it also allowed me to start investing at a very young age. And so for you specifically, if you're working a job right now that doesn't pay you enough money to allow you to invest, then you have to either go and find some type of side hustle to make more money on the side or consider finding a new higher paying job altogether. But basically, if you don't want to quit your
your job, but you're not making enough money to be able to invest, then you have to find some way to make additional money on the side of your job and use that additional money as your investment money. And in my opinion, at an absolute minimum, this side job or side business or side hustle should be making you at least $500 per month so that you can be maxing out your Roth IRA every year at $6,000 per year. And I've got countless videos on my channel about the best side hustles, ways to make money online, best online businesses, best online jobs, and so much more. And so if you need more ideas on how to make money, then head over to my channel after you finish watching this video, of course. Now, obviously, in addition to everything else that we've talked about in today's video about how you can maximize your savings for retirement, you'll also really want to consider doing things like cutting back your expenses and consider downsizing. For example, if you have a huge house with a huge mortgage that you can barely afford or a car payment that's leaving your wallet feeling light at the end of each month, then you should really consider downsizing these things. Because when you downsize, you're effectively giving yourself a raise. At the end of each month, you have more money left over from your paycheck to then go and splurge on a new boat. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You have more money left over to go and invest. Hey, I hope that this video was helpful. I really do. If you have not already dropped a like down below for the YT Algo or subscribe to the channel, please do both those things. You guys are amazing and I hope you have an awesome rest of your day or night. And as always, I will see you again very soon. Take care.